Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Good afternoon. Where am I? Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, Sheena is going to start shortly on your grade seven writing lesson for today. I am available in the Q&A section should you have any questions or answers. Thank you so much and enjoy the lesson. Hello, grade sevens. Awesome to have you joining us today. It's so great to be back. Yes, today we are doing writing. OK, so you will need to like listen carefully, need to jot down little things that I say. Make sure you have paper, pencil, colors and everything that you need. OK, because writing generally, I, I think you are aware that in a classroom there's always someone to help you and to guide you and look at what you're doing. And because we can't actually do that, I'm just going to go through it slowly with you. I'm going to show you what to look at and what to look for. And I'm going to show you how I did one that you can look at as an example. I've also organized and set up a flip grid um, classroom or set up where you can go in with the code I give you at the end of this lesson and you can actually show me your advert because we are writing, we are designing and creating an advert. OK, so you can present it there for me. I would love to see, but that information will be at the end of this slide. So don't worry. There's my email if you want to send me your work. This is only for content related tasks that you are to use this email for. OK, so if you have completed your task and you want me to see it and give feedback, please send it to me. Here's my Twitter and Instagram for any queries. If you want to share a photo of what you've done or how you're learning, that'd be awesome. OK, so for today, by the end of the lesson, these are the things you should be able to do. These are the skills you should have. So you can create an ad using print elements, persuasive techniques and persuasive claims. Creates questions about design layout, mm -hmm. completes a table, creates completes planning with evidence of brainstorming, uses feedback to revise and edit and rewrite, use knowledge of grammar, spelling, etc. to edit, can write an advert using a frame, write sentences using the words or explanations to show the meaning and use a checklist for self editing. OK, so this is actually what you're going to surprisingly be able to accomplish today and I have great faith in you. So I know you can do it. Right, this is a very, very nice mind map I found and I thought you could actually do it yourself. Maybe just like in a rough draft, you can actually write this down now while I'm going through it in case you're afraid you missed something. OK, so how to write a brilliant advert. OK, so remember all the techniques and persuasions and different things we discussed this week about adverts. So let's look at some of his ideas. I have a snappy slogan to make the product sound interesting or exciting. Remember the slogan of, um, was it Nike? That was just do it. That's snappy. And it's a slogan or McDonald's. I'm loving it. Or Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's finger licking good. Those are all snappy slogans that are interesting and exciting and they really appeal, make the product actually appealing. All right, another idea. I have included exaggeration to make the product sound appealing. So I've really exaggerated. Um, I've really been creative in my use of adjectives. I've loved, it is super duper good. In other words, it is like really, really good. But I don't have evidence to back that up. But I'm going to advertise that because I want you to take notice of my product or my advert or my service or whatever I'm selling. OK, I have included an intriguing question to draw my reader in. Have you often noticed that adverts will display a question to say, are you still having headaches or 
do you see double? You know, they'll ask these strange questions and you're like, oh, wait, I do. Oh, yeah, I do. I need to read this advert. OK, so you'll deliberately go to now because they've engaged you. So you'll go to the advert and you actually read it and you may actually end up buying the product because it they got your attention. I have described the benefits of the product fully. So the benefits of a product. Yesterday we looked at this um, boots. Remember, oh, I can't remember what they were called to be honest, but um, you'll probably remember grade seven. And remember the, the person that reviewed it was saying how comfortable they were and how durable they were and waterproof. So when you describe a product, if I'm describing hiking shoes specifically made for the outdoors, specifically made for hiking, I'm going to include those benefits. I'm going to include it's waterproof, it's durable, it's strong, and um, it's it can't be scratched, put it like that, or something like that makes people say, OK, I want those boots because not only are they waterproof, but they're durable and they're strong. OK, because you can get boots and shoes that are waterproof, but they're not strong. So it's a very good technique. Put out your benefits, not your negatives. OK, so display your benefits, dis display the positives. OK, the next one bubble there says I have played around with words or I have included a joke. So it's to make a joke of something or a pun or something to get someone um, the attention. Remember with the pizza, um, does your pizza have pizzazz? You remember that advert we did yesterday? OK, so that's kind of like a play on words and you can have a little bit of humor in there, you know, and just make someone laugh as you would a friend if you're trying to make a friend laugh. So you want that in your advert because people love to laugh. People need to laugh. So if you have a bit of humor in your advert, they're definitely going to be drawn towards it. OK, the next one I've included appealing adjectives to make the advert more interesting. So adjectives are describing words. Remember how I said to you this week how important they are. It is not. For example, you can even look at the bubble at the top. It says I have a snappy slogan. So it doesn't just say I have a slogan. It actually uses the adjective in its explanation because it's more interesting and because it's more descriptive. So adjectives, especially in advertising, is very important. OK, so now there is always a writing process. Now the writing process we follow, we actually apply to all our writing. So even though some of the questions won't fit with our advert, there are questions in this process that will. OK, so your pre-writing is when you're thinking, when you're doing your brainstorming, when you're doing your mind map. OK, what do I want to say? So what do I want to say? What do I want to talk about? What product or service do I want to talk about? How do I want to say it? So in what angle do I want to go from a serious approach? Do I want to go from a um, light approach, lighthearted? Do I want to go from like um, kind and gentle approach? You know, there's so many ways of approaching writing or your idea. Who will read my writing? So in retrospect, who's your audience? Just ask yourself, who's my audience? That's who's going to read your writing. So what are you advertising? Are you advertising something for the children's pop, the population of children or for the adult population or are you targeting teenagers? So who is going to read it? Because that is going to affect your presentation and it is going to affect your choice of words. So what else do I need to know to begin? So before you even start, you've got to ask yourself, OK, this is the way I want to go. This is my product. This is what I want to say. This is who I want to read it. So is there anything else I'm missing? Is there anything else I need to add to this? Or I could add to this to make it a really good piece. Who can I talk to about my ideas? Brainstorming is important and it doesn't just mean drawing bubbles on a piece of paper with your ideas. It also means talking about it with someone who is near you. Mm. Bounce ideas off of them because someone might say something that's not really extraordinary at all, but it'll trigger you. 
it'll trigger you to like get another idea and you'll be like, oh man, I've got it. Thank you. Just because someone is listening and talk communicating and talking back. So that is quite a good, good idea when you're brainstorming. OK, and the next thing is drafting. OK, so now you know what you want to say. You know how you want to say it. You've decided who your target audience is. You've bounced your ideas of someone. You've added maybe more. OK, so now you want to write it down. And the one thing I always say, and I've often got questions about this, like, but ma'am, isn't it important? Yes, what I'm going to say is important. However, in your drafting, it is not something you should be worrying about straight away. When you do your draft, your rough idea, it is your ideas on paper. You just draw it or write it. You don't look at the organization of it yet. You don't pick on your punctuation and pick on your spelling and pick on your neatness. This is your rough draft. You just got to get it on paper because sometimes we get ideas and if we wait too long or try and do it neatly, we actually lose um, the real, real nitty gritty and the real like great idea that we had. We lost it because we're too busy focusing on the little stuff in the beginning. So rather put your idea down. If you've got a great idea, if you've got great things, write it down. If you've got more than one idea, write it down. OK, then you can see, OK, are my thoughts organized? Am I staying with the one idea or are all my um, thoughts of my questions that I need to put in my advert unrelated? Because then you need to fine tune. Then you can cross out stuff. OK, and then you can say, OK, I've got all these ideas. Which one is the best to develop? Which one gives me more flexibility to do more with, especially with regards to advert? OK, and then you can say, OK, I'm going to put together these ideas. Um, what order do I want to say them in? What do I say first? What do I do first, second, third and fourth? OK, and then you can look at your information. You can look what you collected and think, OK, do I need anything else? Do I need a price to be on here? Do I need little legal rules to be on there? Do I need, does my advert product need ingredients to be listed if it's got something that someone's allergic to? So these are the, the little things you might not think of, okay, um, that you might want to reach out and think about while you're jotting your ideas down. Then who can read this and offer suggestions? So now you've got your rough draft. Who can you take it to? to go and look at it and say, OK, this is really cool. I like this idea. OK, you must just like look at that over there and maybe restructure this sentence or maybe shorten this sentence so it's not a lot of reading, etc. So just set an objective point of view, an outside point of view, because when you look at your own word, you are sorry, your own work, you don't always see it objectively. And criticism and suggestions from someone need not be negative. It can be positive. It can be like, you know what? That's a great, I love what you did there. That's a great slogan or that's a great image. You know, it doesn't have to be negative. It can be positive as well because sometimes you doubt your own work. So it's nice to have someone look at it and say, OK, no, your idea is good. No, go for it. All right. So that's quite important. That's the second part of the writing process. Now let's look at the third part, revising. This is when you want to improve your writing. So in other words, you've got your rough draft. You've just put your thoughts on paper. Now we've got to organize it, OK, and we've got to make clear. And we've got to decide what we're going to keep, what we're not going to keep, which ideas are relevant, which are not relevant. So these are a few questions you can ask yourself. Have I read what I've written? So have you actually, after you scribbled your ideas down, did you actually go back to actually read it to make sure you're happy with it or that it's clear? Are there parts you should add in or take out? Have you used the absolutely best idea in words? Could you possibly use a better adjective than the one you're using? Or could you make your bland sentence more interesting by adding an object, an adjective? OK, so the next question they have here is my writing in a sensible order. 
Okay, uh, at BERT we know they kind of put the writing in various places, but there is a reason for that as well. All right, what do you want them to see first? What do you want them to see next? What do you want them to see last? So your writing needs to have some kind of order, and this is when you use your topography, okay? When you use your font, when you use your letter size. All right, and then you look at the suggestions that someone has made. So if someone looked at your rough work and they thought, okay, I like this and this, but this and this doesn't really go. You just bounce off the ideas, then you can see which suggestions can you actually use to improve your writing. And I make, I hope I'm making sense and I hope I'm not going too fast. Okay. Now the next part is editing. So now you've revised it. Okay. You have written your second draft out. It's a bit neater. Uh, certain things make better sense, etc. Now you go over that and you correct it. So it's your finished product, but you need to check it yourself. You need to check have you used complete sentences. Now we know with an advert they like to keep the sentences short and unfinished because it is a technique of advertising. So in that case, it's acceptable. Are my spelling, capitalization, and punctuation correct? So, for example, when you made a spelling mistake, was it deliberate to get attention for the advert? Or was it a real spelling mistake that you have to go back and correct? Capitalization. Which words do you want to be noticed first? Would they look better in capitals? Punctuation. Is it correct when you asked a question to be intriguing? Did you put a question mark beside it? When you made an exclamation to get attention, did you put an exclamation mark beside it? OK, so then you go through and you check your work and you mark the areas that you did find and you fix them on the same page. Then you get someone to have a look at your work. Check it. Is it good? Is it better than it was before? Are there any more suggestions? Because remember, you can always improve on something. Absolutely always. There is no such a thing as you reach a limit with your work. It can always be improved. OK, so publishing is. I use publishing as an example because we're doing an advert. All right, normally you would probably write final draft or neat draft. OK, I've used publishing a time to share. So now you know that your finished work is going to be shared and going to be seen. So should I illustrate it and display it? In other words, should you put a drawing with it? Should it be colorful? Should you display it somewhere on your wall, in your classroom, um, on your online classroom with me? Where would you like to display it? Should you bind it in a book? Is it one that maybe you uh, kind of add that's kind of like you flip through? Well, that I think that would work really, really well with the advert. Should I read it out loud? Is it an advert you can read aloud? OK, is it expressive in that way? Can I put it up in the classroom? Can I read it on Flipgrid? Now I put that in there on purpose because I have set up Flipgrid for you where you can share your advert that we are working on today because I would really love to see it. OK, so it'll be really a nice platform for you to share your work and it's a secure platform, so it can't just go wild on the Internet or social media. OK, unless you do that. <laughs> All right, so now we've gone through our writing process. This is a crucial part of your planning. OK. Now writing. You're writing. Are you going to join it? Or are you going to put print? Are you going to have little paragraphs or not? Are you going to connect thing, words and sentences? Are you going to use different kinds of punctuation? Have you included different kinds of sentence starters? How's your vocabulary? Did you get adventurous with it? How's your spelling? Is it deliberately incorrect or did, do you need to fix something using the dictionary? Are you writing carefully and making sure it makes sense? 
OK, now this is writing criteria that you actually use for all your writing tasks. The next one is one you use for adverts. I have put up a clearer um, description of this further on. OK, so this is what we're going to look at at the end. Once we've created our advert, we will go back and see have we done these things? Have we included a snappy slogan? Have we described the benefits? Have we included persuasive language? OK, so have we exaggerated to make it sound appealing? Is there an intriguing question in my advert? Is there adjectives? Have I played with words and made a joke? Have I included bullet points or have I used titles or subtitles? Is there a diagram or a picture? So these are all little things that we need to consider when checking. It's almost like a checklist. Have we done this in our advert? OK, so now we're actually going to get to the point where we make one. Now this is one of the worksheets that I will share with you. OK, so now you have to decide. OK, there's two different ways you can do it. You can do it like writing on the left hand side or you can do it like on the right hand side. OK, so what are you advertising? What is your product? So think about it now because you're going to do it along with me. Think about it now. What is what? What is your product? What do you, what do you think you could advertise? What do you think is a need? How much does it cost? Why should people buy it? What words can you use to persuade people to buy it? And where will you advertise it? Okay, so where will it, where or how will you advertise it? Why do people need your product? When is it available? For which age group? Who's your target audience? Okay, now this is your planner. It's like a mind map. It's just a bit different, um, but how you do it is not as important as the information that should be in there. OK, so I've given you literally three ideas. You have those two methods. And you have this planner method. OK, so this one has different shapes for different information. So the first one is describe your service or product. What will grab your attention? What is in it for the consumer? So what did they get out of it that will make them want your product? What will the headline be? And why is yours better than the competition? So this actual worksheet, you will see no sentences will fit in there. You want key words. It's planning. Remember what I said about planning. We only use key words for planning. OK. Now at the end, we're going to ask ourselves if we've asked questions, if we've used powerful adjectives, if we've used alliteration, if we've created something memorable, maybe a memorable image. Have we used any facts? Have we used any opinions? Now facts is the truth. It's an actual fact that you cannot change. Opinion is what you think. Opinion can change. OK. So now I'm going to start doing my advert. So I need to decide on a product. I need to decide on a headline. I need to decide what will grab attention. What are the benefits of my product going to be? How can I persuade the audience? Adjectives, what adjectives can I use? Am I going to use bullet points or am I going to use subtitles? Am I going to include an intriguing question? And am I going to include images? So this should be there ready for you to work on. OK, so now I'm going to start creating my advert because like I said to you guys, I'm actually going to do one so that you can see how we go about it. OK, so next I have decided, OK, this is the color scheme I want to go with. This is the image I want to go with. There is my product's name.
So what are you thinking so far? I'd love your thoughts. You can add it into the Q&A. So I've created this advert. OK, so do I have a product? Yes, I do. It's a hand sanitizer. All right. Do I have a headline? Yeah, I put go away. And if you notice, it immediately stands out. Also, the font I used is like a kind of like, how can I describe it? Um, if for it to make sense, like Halloweeny, you know, like scary kind of font. And then my other fonts are a lot more gentler and a lot more kinder. OK, so this one really is a specific font I used. And then I made it in capitals and I made it stand out. OK, so it says go away. So immediately like, huh? I mean, if someone tells you to go away, you would immediately like look at them and say, OK, do it again. So with my ad, I'm using what is set out there in informal language to get your attention. OK, I've used yellow because it is a happy color, but it also stands out. All right. So to grab attention, bright colors, and I actually stayed with yellow and green. Not all adverts do. And I used topography. That's the font I used, the type of writing I used for the different um, words that I've used. So if you had to read this ad, you would see go away and then you would read and you go say go away for good. Or you could be saying say goodbye to gloves. And then it's got a little like germ on the side. The actual product is called Go Greet. OK, and we know greet means to meet people. 100% effective. Go green. Um, I wonder what that means. No GMO ethanol. Environmentally friendly. So there's a lot of this advert that I don't need to say, especially as we know during lockdown. We wear gloves and masks when we go out. So this ad is saying, say goodbye to gloves. With this product, you don't ever need to wear gloves. It's a hundred percent effective. You can actually greet people with your hands because it's called go greet and not with your elbows. OK, it's environmentally friendly, so you're not going to harm the environment. It has no GMO ethanol, which is probably um, a chemical that can be dangerous or damaging to your hands, which are not in this product. It also says go green, which is another directive to environmentally friendly, and it also refers to the colors used. OK, and that germ, he looks really terrified. I would love your thoughts about this ad. OK, so it's a very simple ad. OK, I didn't use a lot of pictures and I didn't use a lot of colors. So the benefits, it's environmentally friendly. So often nowadays, because of our awareness for the ozone layer and going green, which is another reason why the words going green were chosen. OK, because it suits the times we are in. It says no, I used no gloves needed to persuade by saying goodbye to gloves. So that's a technique I use to persuade people to buy my product. Even look at it. No GMO ethanol. So that chemical that is not good for you or for your skin is not in this hand sanitizer. Adjectives, they use green. And you will notice I didn't use a lot of adjectives. However, the ones that I used are effective. I use subtitles. 100% effective, go green, environmentally friendly, goodbye to gloves for good. I used an intriguing question, goodbye to gloves, to get attention. OK. Images are relative, which means they relate to one another. The environmental green, green is synonymous with the environment, so I've used green. I've also advertised that it's environmentally friendly. So it's related to one another. OK, yellow, the sun is yellow, but it's also a happy color. So we're happy that we can actually say goodbye to gloves and we can actually use this hand sanitizer to wash our hands and the germs can be gone for good. Now, I have definitely exaggerated here. 
I have said in this ad that it's 100% effective and it says go away for good to germs. Now, can I, as a person supplying a product, actually promise that to a consumer? So, yes, I've used it in my advertising, but that is why they have that teeny weeny weeny little bit of writing on the ads or on the actual product to say that it isn't actually 100% this or 100% that, okay, to protect themselves. But for my ad, I'm going to use it. Why not? I need people's attention. I need them to buy my product and I want to help people and I want to help the environment. Okay, so this is basically how you go about doing your ad. So I hope you guys are taking notes and that you can present me with the advert. Maybe not as simple, maybe more exciting, maybe more interesting. OK, I would actually love to see it. All right, so now let's check if I've got all my criteria on this advert. OK, do I ask a question? Yes, I do. Do I use powerful adjectives? Well, I used a color and it's quite effective because I've also actually used that color. So it depends on the product you're advertising. Did I use alliteration? Absolutely. Good buy two gloves. Go away for good. Go green. Definitely go greet. I used alliteration. Did I create a memorable slogan? So do you think my slogan go greet or go away is memorable. Do you like my image? Is it does it bounce out? Does it attract attention? What are the facts? What is my opinion? So the facts are that yes, it's environmentally friendly. However, the opinion is that the germs I say on the advert go away for good, but that is actually just my opinion. One can never completely get rid of germs. OK, so I use that as a form of advertising. All right, so I would like to know what you think and I would like to see your adverts. So first, before you begin your adverts, go through the writing process again. OK, so you go through pre writing, you think about the topic brainstorming and planning, drafting, you quickly put your thoughts on paper, revising, you rework any details, so how you're going to organize it, how you're going to change things. Editing is once you've completed your, your activity or your advert, you go over it and review it. Are you happy with this? Are you happy with the spelling? Are you happy with the punctuation? Are you happy with what is in capital and what isn't? Evaluate, you reflect about what you've written. Could you have added something? Could you have left something out? For example, look at my ad. Is there anything, grade sevens, that you would suggest that I can add to improve this advert? Is there anything you suggest that I can leave out? So feedback from you, you can just put it in the q and and I'll have a look at it afterwards. Feedback from you. What can I improve on? What can I add? What can I leave out? Remember what I said, you can always improve something. So improve my advert. That's your challenge. It's a challenge. I hope the challenge is accepted. OK, so then you're publishing. You share your final writing with others, which I've asked you to do on Flipgrid. OK, so now it's your turn. Now you're going to do your advert. You're going to use your planner. OK, and you're going to plan your advert out. Now that you've seen me do my one, now you know. OK, so try not to copy my one because it's meant to be creative. OK, and I'm sure you guys have ideas that I wouldn't have. OK, that there might be things that you feel is a need for students or in the world around you that I haven't thought of. OK, so 
always try and be creative. Always try and think outside of the box. So now we need to check. Did we include a slogan that was interesting and exciting? Describe the benefits of your advert. Did you include persuasive language? Did you exaggerate to make the advert sound interesting? Did you include any intriguing questions? Did you include adjectives that were interesting? Did you play with words and make some jokes and humor? Did you include bullet points, titles and subtitles? Did you include a diagram or a picture? OK, so I don't know if you got that down because remember the earlier image was not clear. So I'm actually going to stop here for just a few seconds and let you write that down. I have shortened it. I have put it in note form so it's quicker for you to write down and it's not long sentences. So I'm giving you a minute to write that down. OK, you still have a few seconds to write that down. All right, so now if you need a bit of help, these are some links to help you with your planning, to help you with your advert, to help you. Even Pinterest has some really, really nice I will ask so many ideas of how you can use different um, worksheets or different ideas to plan for your advert. There are also on YouTube, you will find there are videos you can watch on how to write or design your own advert as well. They are a bit more intricate. OK, so I've kind of laid it out simply for you today because I did not want to confuse you, but if you want to look further, you can. All right, so let's just touch on what we are doing tomorrow. We have about five minutes left. So tomorrow we're going to work on our language. OK, we're going to work on synonyms and antonyms. How to use your colon and semicolon correctly. Mm -hmm. How to use the dictionary correctly and vocabulary in the correct context. OK, so as you've noticed, often when I give these lists, we end up doing all those things while we're working and you don't even notice you're doing them. So don't stress too much if you don't understand what one of those instructions mean. But yes, we are going to do that tomorrow at the same time. But this are really great size. Please, sevens, please, 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 please share your advert with me. This is what it looks like. OK, I'm going to give you exact instructions on how to go there. OK, so after the lesson, you first ask permission because I refuse to get into trouble because you didn't ask permission. You ask permission to go on Flipgrid. There's the website www.flipgrid.com. OK, then you go to where it says the flip code. Do you see that picture? That's what it's going to look like when you go on the website. It's going to say empower every voice and it's got that image there. You go to where the arrow is pointing and you are going to type in this code. My advert grade seven, GR seven, but you have to type it in exactly as I have it here for it to accept it. Then you click the blue arrow and once you are in, 
Does you see the green button? You press it and you can share your advert. Video yourself sharing it or however you want to share it. Where you see the name on this example, it says Razine Asad. That will actually be your name that will come up here because it will be you recording or reading or showing me your advert. Please participate. It's really important that I can give feedback because I can actually respond to your advert on Flipgrid. I can actually go in there and give a comment. I can actually send you a video and say, hey guys, this is what I love and thank you for participating and give advice. All right, so please, please design a cool advert for me. Follow what we learned today and please share it with me. I really, really would love to see your participation. These are this information is for um, if you need to know anything, if you need to also if you want to share your photograph of you learning or working or actually participating in the lesson with me, you can send to any of these links. OK, and in the beginning, I, you can just always rewind when this is uploaded and look at my email address to send me your advert if you feel more comfortable. This is voluntary. This is just for to find out more about you, but it's you don't have to do it. But if your parents can just fill that in or go to the link, it would, we would love to get to know you. But uh, please, please, please promise me, please, guys, I want to see what you can do. Show me what you can do. The challenge is on. So tomorrow I'm going to see you same time, same place for language. Awesome job, guys. See you later.